come. But no, O oh Lord, you know it altogether. You have been set me behind and before, and made your hand to come I'm too happy about that. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend up into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall your hand lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. The Lord had a blessing to the reading of his holy word, and the might be down in our hearts. So we we want to ask our people, Rogers, if we will come now and offer our prayer for this morning. Repent of their sins 
Lord. And to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Oh Lord, thank you. And we praise your holy and praise. The Lord has Sister Edna caught me off guard this morning, but I'm not repaired. 
Get the mic. Once again, good morning, family. Good morning. Do we have a first time visitor as to do with the new stand? Any, anybody? Oh, well, we all want one, one big family, all right? Just turn to each other and say good morning. Good morning. And glad to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. 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 We had our welcome song, please. <laughs>
Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to say if for this memorial program, if I forgot anyone, I'm, a, I'm really sorry. Um, if I didn't get the name of your loved one that has left, I am so sorry. And the next, if we have to do this again, we will do this again. But I would like you to please get your names to me just a wee bit more. Okay? Thank you. Now it's time for our ties and our welcome. Let us recite our mantra. Recite every week. Tithing and activity. Don't let go of fear and unbelief that you close your hands to God. Open your hands and God will pour out the greatest blessing you have ever experienced. How do you cry to me that our ties and our welcome? Every man and woman and child, according to the purpose in his heart, so let us give, not trustfully or of necessity, for God's love and care for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God, because you're the giver of every good and perfect gift. We thank you, O oh God, because you're the giver of life itself. We thank you, O oh God, because you gave us another day to come into the house of worship to lift up our voices unto your, your name and unto your will and way. We pray, O oh God, right now, and we thank you for supplying us with all our needs, for all of our needs, and even some of our wants. We thank you, God, that you've given us a home to live in, uh, food, clothing, and shelter, Lord, we take it out for granted. We pray, O oh God, God, now for those who may not have some of the things that we take for granted. But Heavenly Father, we just pray and thank you for all that you have given us, because all things come from you. And we pray, O oh God, that as the gift from the giver's come. That you will bless them, bless and bless them in their houses. So 30, 60, and 100 fold. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.
We want you to get the honor, God. We need you to get the praise. We need you to get the adoration. We need you, oh God.
Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. To God be the glory. Amen. This tribute is to extend our deepest condolences to the families of our dearly departed Philippian members. Those of us left here on earth feel terrible separation, but a lot of us have to As each has left a great spiritual legacy for the families to follow. We can describe each departed member as being a faithful and kind servant. Selfless, dedicated, and loving, they have left a legacy of working selflessly for the Lord. And those saints are as follows. Our own Reverend Dr. Clayton D. Furlow, Deaconess Dorothy Hughes, Deaconess Gladys Robinson, Deaconess Quincy Robinson, Deaconess James Collins, Sister Rosa Bell, Brother Henry Green, Sister Barbara Taylor, Sister Rosalind Long Tolliver, Sister Hattie Jordan, Sister Esther Wilson, Sister Diane Rich, Brother Phil Franklin, Sister Christine Strong, Brother Casey Waddell, Brother William Moten, and Sister Ernestine Lake. Oh. Church, I'd like to ask now at this time, just for a moment, we can just pause for a moment of silence while we acknowledge our saints. <coughs>
praise God this morning and as we honor those that have passed on. Hope I can uh, offer a few words of comfort for us. Second Corinthians 1, 3 and 4 says this. Blessed be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercy, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulations. Why? That we may be able to comfort those Amen. which are in the trouble. Amen. By the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted of God. Sharing the pain, sharing the grief, and sharing the comfort. Grief is a natural part of living life. Even Jesus wept when he heard his friend Lazarus had died. We all know that scripture, Jesus wept. He wept because he was grieving. By the tells us, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We're comforted because when Jesus left, when Jesus died, he left us with the comfort, the Holy Spirit, the power to seek us, to comfort us. Maybe I can explain this scripture a little better by telling the story. There was a man walking down the road and he fell into a deep hole. And he was yelling, help me, help me out. Pretty soon a doctor came by. The doctor wrote him a prescription, threw it down in the hole, and kept on getting yeah. Sooner or later, a preacher came by. <laughs> <laughs> Preacher saw the man in the hall, the man was trying to help him. He comes to the man, he wrote him a prayer. Threw it in the hall. After a while, his friend came by. And his friend saw him down in the hall, help him help. His friend jumped down in the hall with him. The man said, Are you crazy? Now both of us are stuck down in the hall. <laughs> He said, I've been here before, and I know how to get out. <laughs> That's what happens when we comfort one another. That's what happens. That's why the scripture tells us that when we receive comfort, and when we find relief from our troubles, and when we're soothed by the Holy Spirit, that we should share that comfort with others who are troubled. Maybe it was a scripture or, or a song. Maybe it was a testimony. Could have been a sermon. A listening ear. A hug. A shoulder to cry. Don't hold back on the comfort that you receive from others. And the anonymous poem said, Death leaves heartache difficult to hear. Love leaves Sweet memories no one can see. Now I, I really feel something about that. Speak to me because uh, it reminds me of when my mother passed away. I took her memories and I put them in my basement and I didn't look at them for two years. I couldn't look at a video, I didn't want to see a picture, I just left them there. Then I just couldn't do it. Then, just, then one day, the pain went away. Now I love to tell stories. I can tell you some funny stories about my mother, and I love to tell them. Her and my aunt, they were two funny peas in the pot. I love to tell the stories. No one can take those memories away. That leaves an empty place, yes. But one day, when you think of your loved one, the pain isn't as sharp. You know, psychiatrists have defined five stages of grief. Some say five, some say seven, but sometimes they mesh together. There's shock and disbelief, denial, anger, depression, and finally, acceptance. We have to make sure we don't get stuck 
in any of those states, especially if you've been a kid. I was my mother's caregiver, and maybe I got stuck. I, when I think about it, two years was a long time. Emotions can be very fragile. Don't be afraid to ask for help. We must remember, as Christians, we do not grieve as those who have no hope. That's why it's important that our loved ones are saved. So we will be able to see them again. Amen. Hold on to this scripture. John 16 and 22 says this. So you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. Pain is rarely pleasant, but without it, our joy wouldn't be nearly as sweet. We have lost many loved ones during this pandemic. In our church family, as well as our biological family, and our friends. Fortunately, we are left with some sweet memories that leaves heartache difficult to heal. Love leaves sweet memories no one can steal. God bless you, church. Keep looking up.
was coming. What a blessing 
Now we're going into our church legacy. In the Baptist Church, the church founded on love, love for God, love for and love for our Amen. Now we will recite our verse of the week, which may be found on the inside cover of the program. We're going to ask everyone to stand as we recite together. We're familiar with it. Let us begin. In my father's house are many hands. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Now, the fourth is the new now we're going to have a song of preparation. And after that, the next voice that you will hear will be from the Philippians, the own Reverend Victor Smith. Please pray for him. And with him, as he comes, he is the son of the Philippian Baptist Church. He is a man of God. He's a thinking man. A man who meditates with the Word of God day and night. One who loves the Lord deep down in his soul. And this is to me. Please pray for him and with the best comes. We're going to sing this song in reference to our pastor and our loved ones of Bolivia. This is one of one of Rep. Furlow's favorite songs.
I can put it into my regular phone? I heard Edna now. No, I couldn't get out this one. Get out of here. That's too close. That's all right. I can see a little bit. But listen, I'm a, uh, this one is just get it later on. Okay. If I saw you was on here. Okay, bye-bye. I'm at church, that's why I asked. I'm going to with church. No, uh uh, look, I'll be over, it'll be over by 12 30. Can you do it then? Touch 
these moral issues. Sanctify this vessel that it might be found hidden in the house of Let nothing far be done in strife or vain. I pray God about every word or deed that you would grant me that forgiveness, that cleanse, that washing of the love that would allow me, God. We proclaim the unsearchable riches of divine and saving grace between the living and the dead. Now, Lord, have your way out of this. Touch every heart. Yes. And every soul that is present. Allow the word of God to rain upon our hearts this morning. Let it fall on the fertile soil of our hearts that it might be planted like seed. Bring it forth to my righteousness. Have your way in our midst, God. Don't leave one stone unturned when it comes to sin and unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. It's all in the name of Jesus. Forever, God, we praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Those of you that have the Bibles, you can turn with me. Those that don't have the Bibles, you can read these passages of the Scripture and your leisure. Morning's lesson found in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 5, and the text is taken from verses 1 through 10. This morning's theme. Yes. I'm scared. <laughs> Understand the situation. Amen. Most of us don't like to talk about our fears mm. and what has us afraid and scared. But I'm going to make a declaration this morning. I'm going to speak in the imperative. There's not one person present who not or have never been prayed or scared. Sometimes understanding a situation will make us afraid, will make us scared. Perhaps someone present has gotten that pink slip at work. We have lost the job. That will send fear to you. Raising a family, taking care of a home, the loss of a job will cause turmoil and pearl to enter into your life, and you will be scared of what the consequences might be. Many of us present right now this morning have faced health challenges, not knowing what the outcome would be. 
we'll get back to the text. We'll get back to the text, John. Yes? Scared. Understand the situation. And I think this morning's text has a verse that speaks directly to that, and I'm going to read that as well as the context. In verse 4 of this chapter of
according to the ancient custom of that time. The legal document was in the form of a scroll and it had writing on the inside that was scoured in its explanation and on the outside in all the form of his writing and it was rolled up and it was seated. Well, this is what John is talking about that he sees in him. The scroll was in the hand of the one that fell upon the throne. So God is holding the scroll in his hand. And this is a legal document. That God is holding in his hand. They have writing in it. And has writing on the outside of it. And it's sealed with a seat. But no one who's got around it in heaven or on earth to take this document, this scroll out of the hand of God. Turn the seated on the throne. John looks around. He looks to the east, the west, the north, the south, in heaven or on earth. He found no one that was worthy to open, to open the book and to loose this seat. And he says, No! The line of the child of Judah was that worthy to take his scroll out of his hand and to loose this seat. See, see, Israel. But he told me Israel, 
You shall not sell the land because the land is mine. Yes, see, see, the land belongs to God. The Bible tells us in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell in the land. The land belongs to God. And the inhabitants of the earth belong to God. Only the God man, the sinless man, Christ himself, who was, a, who was the kinsman redeemer of us, who had the right to be a father. Yes, he was of the root of David. He was the lion of the tribe of Judah. Isaiah said the seven shall never depart out of his hand. He had the right. He was sovereign. He was king. He was Lord. He was the saint. Oh, and the Christ line in the divine line of, 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 of God's ancestry leading up to Christ. Amen. So here we have Christ oh, who was sinless, who was our chasing redeemer, because he's a man like we are. Hallelujah. But he was sinless. He had the authority to take to take, to take the scroll out of his hand. The Bible tells us, tells us, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, and what a, the elder said, oh, uh, weep not, because the night of the child of Judah. Yes, he was able to loose uh, 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 the seven seals. He was able to open the book up. Uh, uh, the four and twenty, the four and twenty elders uh, said, Behold, uh, the land that had been slain before the foundation of the world uh, was found worthy uh, to open the book. Somewhere in eternity, in eternity past, before the earth had been formed, before the earth was created, of God designed a plan to save humanity that would be lost. So God Himself decided that He Himself would be the one to bring our redemption, to uh, satisfy the just of man of a holy God of sin. He paid the sin debt. Of the Lord, the foundation of the world was set in place. Christ offered himself as a sacrifice in the eternal sanctuary of the Holy of Holy before the throne of God that offered himself as a sacrifice for sin. So in God's peace, who makes happening in heaven, yet it was yet to happen on earth because Christ had to die to fulfill the covenant promise. Yet he had to be like God. He was a man, but a man without sin. He could go to Calvary. Yes, he could. Yes, he could. He could die upon the cross, as he did. But thanks be to God, on the third day, he died upon the cross. For all power and authority in his hands, he had the power to redeem lost humanity.
noite. Amém. Deixa eu tomar som. Welcome to the Lord Jesus Christ. Die for our sins. Rose again. Keep you. Bless you. Without his grace to shine our heart. Until we meet again. Amen.